Are you ready to receive the word of God? Yes. Hallelujah. Don't get distracted, okay? Do you have a notebook and pen? How many of you have a notebook and pen? Congratulations. <laughs> you are an obedient servant. <laughs> Okay? Why? Because we are not able to, to get everything. We need to write down, to check. Why? Because what you are learning here, you are going to teach others. We are not here just learning for yourself. You need to receive from God. You need to teach your family, your children, the people in your, in your, in your cell group. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And the message is, keep deaf dead. <laughs> keep deaf dead. I want to begin with a statement of faith. Of all religions in the world. All religions in the world. And there are four major religions. And the big ones are Christianity... Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism. This is the four major ones. And also there are, as well, there are minor ones. A lot. And if you don't know, there are more than 2,000 religions in the world. And Christianity is the only one which the founder died for its followers. Is the only one. Buddha didn't die for the Buddhists. Muhammad didn't die for the Muslims. Maharaj didn't die for the Hindus. But the founder of Christianity died and gave his blood for their followers. Never compare Christianity with all other religions. There is no comparison. Because no one other gave their blood for the followers. None of them. What they did? They received some revelation. All the founders of another religion, they received some revelations and, and they have gotten some prophecy that they received but they didn't die and they didn't give their blood for their followers and this is a very important message to you because we are celebrating the Passover and you need to understand the meaning of it and, and this distinguished Christianity from all other religions the Christian faith is built on the incarnation, the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the expected return of its founder. Hmm. We are expecting his return. Christianity is the only faith on which the life of the founder is the foundation for the faith of its followers. It's the only one. Or Jesus' incarnation, life, death, resurrection, is the foundation of our faith. Can you say amen? amen? And I have a question to you. And I want you to think. Why did Jesus have to die? Hmm? Why did Jesus have to die? This is a very important question. This is important because it's a reasonable question. Why he, did he have to die to redeem humanity? Beloved brothers, God is the creator of the universe. Amen? And the Bible says that God, he holds the universe in the palm of his hands. Huh? 
Can you imagine? The God, He has the universe in the palm of His hand. And I think it's not good for you to receive on His lap of God. <laughs> Can you imagine? How could the creator of the universe not save his own creation without killing his own son? This is a question. Why he had to kill his own son to save humanity? If he is the creator of the universe, if he created all the universe with his, his, his voice, he said, be the light. Why he didn't say a word, he said, be redeemed. Done. Just a word. And everything was solved. This is an important question. Christians don't think. Normally they don't think about it. This is an important question. If God can raise the dead by saying a word. Because Jesus called Lazarus, come out. And the dead one started walking. Why could he not redeem you and I by talking redemption to you? Hmm, this is a question. Why did we need to have a bloody Friday. How many of you wa watched The Passion of Mel Gibson? How many of you watched that movie? It's a good movie to see, just for you to see how bloody was that Friday or that day. Why did the God of the universe have to deal with the death of a man to save mankind? To answer this important question, I need to talk about the birth of death. Okay, are you with me? Please take note, notes and write this down because it's very important. I'm going to try to speak slow because it's this, what I'm giving you today is not milk. It's some solid food. <laughs> and then for you to, you need to follow me. You need to take notes. If not, you are going to get out of here and you are not going to, want to receive what I'm teaching you, okay? Then I have another question. When was death born? When was death born? When? Hmm. Okay. Who created death? Yeah. Mm. A lot of Satan. Yeah, I, I listen here. Many people say that Satan created death. This theology is wrong. Sorry. Sorry. This theology is wrong. But it's okay, no problem. First thing I want to say to you, Satan is not able to create anything. <laughs> he just used what God created. Maybe some people say, ah, these, these songs are from the devil. No! He's not able even to create a song. He got something from God and he's using it. Everything. Because he's not able to create. Many, this theology of that Satan created death is not correct. If you believe in this theology, I'm sorry, you will never understand why corrupts you. If you, under, if you believe that Satan created death, you will never understand why Christ came to die for you. Never. And I have one affirmation. Death was created by God. I'm going to prove you in a few minutes. 
death was created by God. Death, are you with me? Are you with me? Death is not negative. God created death without life. How God created, did God create death? With no, no life. Death had no life. <laughs> I know it's too much for you. But death was dead. <laughs> death was dead in the beginning. <laughs> death existed before Aden. But had no power over Aden. Because death had no life. God created death. God introduced death to his first man. God introduced death to him. And gave Adam the control over death. He said to Adam, Adam, you decide what happens to death. If it stay dead, or if shall come alive, you decide. Are you with me? Yeah. You, he said, you are going to understand when I read the text. Adam, you are going to decide what is going to happen. Death is there. If you are going to give life to death, or if it's going to stay dead. Because God gave the power to Aden over death. Let's read now in your Bible. Who created death? Genesis chapter 2. Let's look what God said about death. Let's read all together. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. But you, not, you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you, you certainly die. Or, uh, please, you have to be connected to me. God said, when you eat this fruit, you will activate someone that is a red present. When you eat from this tree, you will activate someone that is here. Death. Adam didn't create death. Satan didn't create death. Death was there, but was useless. Okay? Death was there, but it was useless. God said to Adam, it's up to you, Adam. You can give life or you can leave it dead. <laughs> Are you with me? You can give life to death or you can keep it dead. When you think about death, do you like it? Do you like going to funerals? Huh? Do you like going to cemeteries? Huh? No? I used to be afraid of death in the past. I remember when I was a child, sometimes I had to pass in, the, in, in front of the cemetery. Huh? I used to walk 200 meters away from the cemetery, not to go to pass in front. I said, maybe I am passing in front and some ghost comes and, come here. <laughs> yeah. It's, I even didn't like to go to funerals. 
When Jesus asked someone passed away, he said, mm, I don't like to go to funerals. Is there someone here that likes it? Yeah, normally no one that has good sense don't like because death is not something literally good for human beings. And if, if you listen to me today, if you receive this understanding that I'm going, I'm going to give you today, this te today teachings, you will never ever will be afraid of death. Never ever. You are going to be able to go at midnight and to end in the cemetery and to dance there. Yeah. You're going to go to look to death and say, Ha, oh, death! <laughs> you are dead. <laughs> death was created to be under your control. Death was created to be under Adam's control. And, and God said, Keep it dead. And no problem to you. But, hmm, there is one but there. But you can decide if it's going to be dead or if it shall come to life. And God warned Adam, death can do nothing if you don't eat. Death can do nothing if you don't disobey my word. God said, if you eat from this tree, you are going to give life to death. Are you with me? If you eat, you are going to give life to death. And this is why the, today's message is, keep death dead. <laughs> it's too much for your, brain, for your brain, isn't it? I know. When I was... Thinking, preparing is too much. I say, this is a heavy food. Death was powerless, useless, ineffective, but it was present. Death existed, but had no power. This is important. Death existed, but had no power. Everything that has life has death built in it. Do we have any, any flower here in this building? Oh no, no flower. Wow. Okay, no, okay, but okay. I forgot to bring, it's always good to bring some illustration. But I would have, okay. Think now, I have a flower here. <laughs> and this is the pot. This is the pot, and this is the flower. Sorry, I have no flower, oh Lord. And this is the pot, and uh, the flower is alive, okay? The flower here is alive, and there are a lot of flowers. Can you see? Yeah. Now you have to use your imagination, okay? <laughs> and the plant, the plant is hanging on their life on their life where they are hung on to to the soil there is one pot here okay this is a pot there's a pot and and what ha we have here inside of the pot soil and the plant is hanging to the soil because that this soil is where it came from Okay, the seeds came from the soil. And the plant, okay, thank you, Christine. Thank you. Ah, much better, much better. Ah. Hmm. Can you see that it's alive? Can you see it's alive? Why it's alive? Because it's attached to where 
it came from it came from the soil then the point is everything that was created there is death animal there is death human beings there is death plant there is death for you to kill this plant the only thing you need to do is to take it out from the place where it came from when you take it out I'm not going to do that but when you take it out from the place where it came from I don't need to kill did you get why because where you came from will give you life when you are man was created to be attached to God and God said to man when you are attached, attached to me you have life when you disobey me then automatically you are attached and then life comes are you, are you getting then you have to be attached to the place where you came from. Where is the life? The life is in the plant. And as long as the plant stays in the soil attached to where it came from, it's alive. If you separate the product from the source the product dies if you separate the product from the source do you remember the source when I spoke about the water when you separate dies or God said to Adam you and I are joined if you abide in me and my words abide in you Death can never kill you. It has no power. Death used to have no power over man. The submission, pay attention to what you say now. The submission and obedience of man maintain death powerless. The submission maintain powerless, the death powerless. God said, if you obey me, you will live eternally. But if you detach yourself, if you rebel, rebel against me, then you are in trouble. If you disobey me, my command, God said, you will surely die. God said, death is there. Don't eat. Obey my word. In the day you eat, you certainly die. Our God was saying, I can guarantee you, you will certainly die if you disobey my word. Many men had the power over death through the obedience to God's word. The key for you living forever is obedience to the word of God again. I have another question. What did God give Adam to keep death dead? You have to think. What did God give Adam to keep death dead? What he gave? What, what he gave to Adam in order for death to be dead? His word. He said, don't kill or don't eat. He, he gave the word. Don't eat because in the day you disobey me, the word that I gave you, death catch you. Mm -hmm. God Pay attention, beloved brothers. God didn't give Adam religion for him to follow. God didn't give to Adam 
a list of ceremonies that he had to do. The Bible says he was in the garden. The Bible said every day God would come talk to him. And he was not, didn't have even any service there as we have here. It was just a relationship. And, and God said to him, if you keep my commands, if you obey, you have no problem with death. But what happened? Huh? What happened with Adam? He messed mess up and disobeyed. The, what he disobeyed? The word. Are you with me? What Adam disobeyed? The word. Now comes the point. Now comes the point. If death came to life when man disobeyed the word of God, then the only way for death to be powerless again is if he gives man the word again. <laughs> I know it's too much. <laughs> But uh, Holy Spirit will help you. God gave a word. And he disobeyed. And the only way. For the man. Be set free. From the power of death. It was. If God gave. To the man. A word again. And what is read in John. Chapter 1. Verse 1. Who. <laughs> In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning, the Word was there. In the beginning, the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word came and became a man. And the Word was crucified. And the Word was given to give life to man. And to destroy the power of death. He received the word. He broke the commandment of God. And now the word says, If you do what I say, you shall get your life back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pay attention to what you say. The breaking of the word destroyed us. But the submission to the word can restore us. Hallelujah. Let's talk now about the activation of death. Uh, if death was created dead... What activated death? Hmm? What activated death? Disobedience. Disobedience. <laughs> Did you know that disobedience in the Hebrew language, it's translated as rebellion? Did you know that? R disobedience is the same for rebellion. And I have another question to you. Do you know what is the word for rebellion in Hebrew? Do you know the word for rebellion in Hebrew? Is the word sin. <laughs> when you are reading the Old Testament that was written in Hebrew, the word rebellion it's written sin. Then there is a point here. Sin in Hebrew is simply rebellion against the will of God. This is sin. If I ask you what sin is, what are you going to say to me? 
Maybe you are going to say, what is some kind of sin that you know? To steal, to kill, or murder, adultery, fornication. These things we know as a sin, but they are not. <laughs> they are not. They are the results of sin. They are the results of sin. Because sin is rebellion against God. And then this rebellion produces a lot of things because of the sin. And when the Bible says, oh, you need to get that, my brother. The Bible says that Jesus came to deal with the sin, not with your adultery, not about your fornication, not about your pornography. He didn't say, the Bible didn't say, Jesus said that he came because of your sin. And what is sin? Rebellion. What is rebellion? Disobedience against God. So, man's disobedience to God's word, his rebellion and sin activated the power of death. Without disobedience, death had no power. It existed, but it was dormant, sleeping. It was powerless. Man's disobedience to God's word gave life to death. Man's disobedience gave death power to kill man. Give the power. Every time you disobey the word, something dies in your life. Did you know that? Listen what I'm saying to you. This is so important. Every time you disobey some principle from God's word, something is dying in your life. Something is dying every time. Or when you don't forgive people, something is dying in your life. When you don't love your brothers and sisters, when you think you are better, like something is dying in your life. It's a disobedience. When you, when you are rebel against authorities, People that are speaking to you, giving you words, and then you are going to another direction. This is rebellion, and something is dying in your life. Every time you, when you do the things your own ways, something is dying in your life. And sometimes, and I can see many people, they are harvesting the results of what of their rebellions I want to speak now about something very important and please take note write it down sin is the source of power of death please write it down say with me sin is the source of power of death amen I need to say one thing to you. <laughs> Maybe it's strange to you. I know it's today it's a, it's a heavy food. But did you know that Jesus didn't come to solve the problem of death? Did you know? <laughs> Maybe he's going to say, no, but this is a heresy. No, be careful. <laughs> Jesus didn't come to solve the problem of death. <laughs> Jesus came to solve this problem here. Sin is the source, the source of the power of death. Death is not the problem. Death is hopeless, useless, and powerless. Death has no power. Death is part of life. I told you, there is life and there is death. In the animals, there is life and there is death. In, in the human beings, there is life and there is death. And death is no, there is no problem. He 
Hebrews 2 verse 9 says, Jesus tasted death for everyone. Jesus tasted death. He tasted death so those who were under the fear of the power of, of death could be set free. Jesus came to deal with the power that death got. Jesus came for what? Why Jesus came to this earth? To deal with what? Are you with me? To deal with the power of death. Not with death. Why? Is people die even today? Yes or not? Are people dying even today? Then Jesus didn't came to deal with death, but with what? The power of death. Or when you remove the source that gives powers to death, it still exists, but it no longer have no power anymore. <sighs> if you really if you really understood what I'm saying, you should be saying, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, glory to God. If you really understood what I'm saying to you. Do you remember what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55? When Paul the Apostle wrote this verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 55, he was talking to whom? Huh? He was talking to whom? He was talking to death. And, and Paul, he was mocking on death. He was mocking. <laughs> if, you, if you really get to have got this revelation, you'd be saying, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. <laughs> Why? Paul the Apostle said, he was talking to death. He said, Oh, death. Where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your thing? Or he was saying, Death, I know you are there, but where is your thing? Where is your power to hurt people? Where is your, your power to hurt? Beloved brothers, for you to understand, how many of you have seen one scorpion? I have seen a lot. But please, the verse again, 1 Corinthians. Paul said, Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Have you seen a scorpion? Take the stink out of the scorpion. <laughs> okay? Out of it. What are going to happen? You can play with him. No harm anymore. Huh. If you if you get a wasp, but take out the stink. Useless. Or another example. For example, if you go among hundreds, thousands of bees with no sting, what are going to happen? You're going to be there. La 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 la. This is what Paul is saying. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Or what Jesus did? Jesus didn't kill the bee. Are you with me? Jesus didn't kill the bee. What Jesus did? He took away the power of death. Jesus took away the sting of death. This is why Paul the Apostle said, Where is your death, your victory? Where is your sting? Hallelujah. Death has no power. He she still exists. 
death still exists, but has no power. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. And now, <laughs> you have to say, where is your victory death? Oh grave, you have no control over my body anymore. <laughs> Jesus didn't destroy death. He, what he did? What he did? He took away this thing. <laughs> Have you seen an angry dog with no teeth? <laughs> and then, then say, bah, 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 bah. then you're not afraid. <laughs> if you really understand what I'm teaching you, you are going to go in front of the cemetery, go to dance there. Ha, la, 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 <laughs> When someone pass, that believes in Jesus passed away, we're going to sing, Hallelujah! Then you are, when you see death, you're going to rejoice. <laughs> you are not going to be afraid of death anymore. Because you are going to look at death with no power anymore. Wow. If I were you, I was saying glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you understand what I'm teaching you today, you are going to look at death and say, Woohoo! No more power of my life. Years ago, I understood this truth. And I came to my mommy and said, Mommy! If I pass away before you, please have a party and celebrate. I told it to my mom. Because <laughs> you have to celebrate. <sighs> Sunday resurrection is what we are celebrating. <laughs> Sunday resurrection is the proof that Jesus took the sting out of death. And he freely walked out of the grave. Then what Jesus did? He took the stick and then he walked away from the grave. He said, where are you, where are you death? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. In that day when Jesus resurrected, death still existed on that Sunday morning but it had no power to hold him down death still existed but death had no power hallelujah, hallelujah. can you praise him for a moment and say hallelujah oh because death could you say death has no control of my life yes yeah, say death has no control of my life Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you understand that, if you understand that, blood blood, you are going to look to death and going to smile at death. <laughs> you are not going to be afraid anymore of death. When you have, for example, when you have a debt to pay at the bank. Do we have a debt to pay at the bank? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks God I don't. But when you have, okay, but it's, it's, it's okay, no problem. But when you have a debt to pay the bank, they have control over you. Yeah, because you owe the money and they have control. Because you owe it then, okay? But what happens if you have a rich friend like Marcio with a lot of money? Then I go to the bank and I pay, I pay your debt. I am your friend, okay? And I have a lot of money. And I go and I pay your debt. Then can the bank bother you calling your name again and say, you have some bills to pay? Yes? No, I have said, don't call me, don't bother me anymore. Because I have no bill to pay. Because someone that loves me paid my bill. And I am here to say, Jesus Christ at the cross, he paid your bill. And death has no power of your life. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 6, 23. Let's read all together. For the wages of sin, the wages of sin, the wages of sin, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. The wages of sin is death, but all it has been paid off. It wages it cannot bother you anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It cannot bother you. <laughs> Good Friday. Good Friday. Passover. It was death payday. Death payday. Passover was death payday. Good Friday was that day when Jesus got his savings out on Calvary and said, it's paid, it is finished. You have nothing more to pay. Your debt to death was paid. Your debt to death was paid for. You don't need to fear death anymore. Amen? You don't need to fear death anymore. You should go to a grave with a smile. Amen? When you pass in front of the grave, look and say, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I wish if I could put everything that I have in my heart in your heart. Then you're going to say, Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> Good Friday or Passover is about Jesus dealing with the source of power of death. Not with death, but the source of power of death. But according to the verse that we read, what is the power of death? What is the power of death? Sin. The power of death is sin. This is what we read. The, the wages of sin is death. What is sin? You have learned. What is sin? Rebellion. What is rebellion? Disobedience to God's word. Let's read the Romans 5.12. Romans 5, Therefore... Therefore, just as sin entered to the world through one man, whose man is it? Adam. And death through sin. And this way death came to all people because all sinned. Now, can you see it now? Death get its power through Sin. Are you following me? Death gets its power through sin. Now it's the point. If, if, are you with me? If you keep in the practice, practice of sin, the sting of death is going to get you. Hmm. That scorpion. This is the point. What is the power of death? Sin. If you keep living a practice of sin, be careful. Be careful. Because death has power over your life. Because your debt was paid for you to repent and abandon sin. And this is a point. Never stay in a church that don't confront sin. Nowadays, people cannot say that sin is sin anymore. That homosexuality is not sin. Or 
Some kind of sin is not sin. It's a, some weaknesses. No, it's sin. And if you don't repent, they stink. <laughs> Can you imagine? You, you're receiving that stink of death. Now I'm talking to all of you now. Be careful. If you die without the blood of Jesus covering your life, you have big trouble. Why? Because you are going to hell. Because death are going to catch you. Say, huh? you are mine. Why? But you, maybe you're going to say, my debt was paid. But what you did, the, the wages of sin is death. Jesus called you for you to live a holy life. Please, abandon your practice of sin. I am talking not about one sin. I am talking about the practice. If the blood of Jesus don't cover your life, don't cleanse you, you are in trouble. You are in big trouble. And it's eternal life eternally to hell I have to warn you I'm not here just to say God loves you ah, you are saved it's okay no it's not okay it's not okay Jesus said that, that the kingdom of God is coming repent from all your sins because Jesus the kingdom of God is coming death gets power through sin if you keep practicing sin, death can get you. You were born, you were born in sin, and you were born under the power of death. That's why you cannot join a church that don't speak against sin. All the religions that I spoke to you, Buddhism, there is no redeeming blood in Buddhism. There is no redeeming blood in Islam. There is no redeeming blood in Hinduism. There is no redeeming blood in any of religion. But there we do have redeeming blood of life in our faith in Christ Jesus. Our faith guarantees the end of death's power. Good Friday, Passover is God's solution. For 4,000 years, God has used goats, lambs, birds, and oxen as a substitute. But He fixed it once it for all. In the past, the people used to bring animals as a substitute. But when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he is the Lamb of God. He takes away the sins. Wow. That's why when you come to this church, there is no altar with lamb here. No blood spread here. <laughs> Why? Because one day there was on Golgotha. There is one in the altar blood in Golgotha. And there is no blood here. Because in that altar was the blood of Jesus. It was paid in full. Romans 5 17. For if by the trespass, disobedience of one man, death came, death reigned through one man. One man, one disobedient, act, activate death. Amen? One disobedient act, activate death. And give it power to kill all humanity. But because of one man, Jesus Christ, all humanity, can be redeemed. Romans 5.19 For just as through the disobedience of one man 
Many are made sinners, so also through the obedience of one man, the many will make righteous. Hallelujah. We need to understand it to receive this revelation of the cross. And you never will be afraid of death anymore. God said to Adam, if you disobey me, death will kill you. If you disobey me, death will kill you. And we need to understand, Lucifer or Satan, he was, he has no power. I know many people, they, they are afraid of death and they are afraid of Satan, isn't it? Some Christians, they are afraid of Satan. But did you know that Satan has no power? I have another question to you, just to make you more confused. Was Satan in the garden? Huh? Of course he was there. But he had no power. Was death in the garden? Yes, but had no power. But... Satan, listen. God said to man, don't eat. If you disobey me, you die. Then Satan, hmm, I have to do something. If he's going to die, I'm going to tempt him. Satan cannot do, cannot make you do bad things. Some people, they do bad things and say, it was the devil. No. It's you, not the devil. The devil just tempts you and distracts you. The only thing he does, he tempts you, he distracts you, and he's a liar. But the, the only thing that I needed to, I needed to make a hand to sin against God. And he tempted and he accepted. Lucifer number one goal is to make you to disobey God. It's his goal. And he's going to do everything. He's going to use people. He's going to use the internet. For you to do what? To sin against God. This is why he's called by Jesus as the tempter. The tempter. He cannot make you sin. But he'll try. He'll tempt you. Let's stand up please. But don't move. Because this is the most important time now. Is the, the answer that you are going to give to God. Lord brothers. Jesus paid, paid your debt. Amen. He loves you and he paid your debt. I need to, talk, to say to you something very important right now. The Bible says, as soon as you, si you sin against God, as soon as you sin, please go quickly. Repent and confess your sin and abandon your sin. Did you get what I say? Quickly. Because if you quickly repent and confess it before God, He is faithful to clean you and to purify you from all your sin. Amen? And the blood of Jesus you make you clean and new. When you repent and confess, means that death is dead again. Did you get what I say? What happens when you repent and confess? Death is dead again. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Jesus gave you the power over, over death. Jesus gave you the power to keep death dead. Amen? You have to keep death dead. How? obedience close your eyes please 
close your eyes. We have to first to thank God because we have the access through the blood that can cleanse us. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Please thanks God now for the blood that was shed at that cross in that Friday that bloody Friday because without the blood there is no remission of sin without the blood you have no forgiving of sin if sins were not forgiven then death would still have power in your life if you don't receive the forgiveness of God death has power over you when I repent I confess my failures the blood cleanses me and death is dead again this is why you have every day to go to the Lord in the morning every day you have you need to have devotional with the Lord it, for you to make sure that death stay dead before you start working. Before you start your day, you should make sure that death is dead. Hallelujah.